All right, what's good, guys? Welcome back to the Cage Lump Original. I got Amon with me here. Amon, what's up? What's good? Yeah. So basically, this part, this uh, episode, we're gonna keep it uh, kind of political, I guess, if you want to say that. We're gonna talk about Middle East, the U.S. Uh, differences between the two, because uh, yeah, Amon here went to Pakistan recently. Yep. So I went to Pakistan about a month ago. I uh, stayed there for all of July and about a week into June, also. So. I was there for over a month, and it was definitely a good trip. I uh, saw a lot of different cultural differences. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, because I remember I went to Iran when I was, like, 13. And it's kind of like a rundown place. Like, it wasn't like, I didn't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't mm. like, like, my life compared to here wasn't like, like it was over there. How many times have you been to Iran? Like, four or five times. Okay, and how old were you? Like, 14, 15. I can't go anymore, because if I go there, they're going to, like, make me enlist in the army. And really? they're like take yeah they're gonna take me away. And so that like, sounds that sounds worse than Pakistan. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, go back. That's crazy. No, so I've been to Pakistan about like I was four times. I mean, the first time I was a baby, so it doesn't really count. Yeah. Second time it was about like early middle school. Then I went um, eighth grade summer, and yeah. then recently I went uh, this summer. So. Yeah, so you got to experience it as like an adult. Yeah, I got this. Is my first time really getting the real experience because when you go as a kid, it's a little more sugar coated in my opinion. Yeah. Like you, you kind of just playing around. You're a little kid, but when you go there when you're older, you kind of get to see like the real, like how people live their lives. You get to see like how things have changed and. What was it? What was it like over there? I honestly think the country has gone worse. Really. Um, I mean, I maybe. Mean, the same. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of the Middle East. That's what a lot of people were telling me who were locals there. It's gone worse over time. So, it. It looked more modern in terms of, like, there used to be a big-ass field in front of my house. Like, it was yeah. all fields, and now it's, like, they turned those into houses. So, the okay. neighborhood is getting more, like, modern in a way. There's even, like, a gym in the neighborhood. There wasn't a gym there before. It had AC and shit. Like, it was, like, you know. <laughs> Dude, it's, like, it had AC. Yeah, they, they were improving, but it, um, from what I remember, like, I remember when I went in middle school, it was dirt roads. It was fields and shit. Yeah. They started actually building So, you live in, like, the middle of nowhere. It was, it's a village. It's actually called Topi, Pakistan, if you look okay. it up. So. Gosh, no, yeah, because, like, my friend went to, like, Lebanon recently, and over there, like you said, when he was younger, like, his house was just, like, in nothingness. It was just kind of, like, fields and roads around him. Yeah, yeah. And then now, like, there's just, like, skyscrapers. Like, not even skyscrapers, just, like, empty buildings, and just, like, the whole town's, like, super congested. There's, like, nothing there. Yeah, I'd say similar to that. There's, like, bazaars, like, a lot of, like, it's very, like... It's it's very all packed together and stuff. Has like so. your like parents told you like your mom told you not to like go somewhere certain places because like when I was younger, my mom told me like never to go out and play soccer when it gets dark because like a dude would kidnap me and make me sell socks on the highway. So yeah, you saw so keep going up. <laughs> like, so like and like I didn't believe her. So yeah. like like me and my friends because like I lived in, like in a like our community had like a kind of like it was like its own small thing and had a like, gate around it. Yeah. And then like there was like like a village down the road. And, like, we'd go play soccer down the road, like, and I was, like, 13 or 14 after dark. And, like, I was, like, oh, like, my mom doesn't know any better. She doesn't know anything. And then, like, I think, like, oh, two weeks later, like, we're going to the countryside. And, like, on the highway, I see some, like, kids selling fucking socks. Yeah. And it freaks me out. So, like, I mean, so I guess it was a true story. But, like, other places you shouldn't be going over there? Um, so you definitely don't go out at night. Um, yeah. Especially, like, if you're not a local and stuff. Um... If you look up, like, a lot of areas in Pakistan, they'll tell you not to travel there because of kidnappings and, like, Damn. you know, terrorist stuff. Like, would they like, kidnap you because you're American? Like, would they um, I'm not sure. Like, I think there's definitely a fear of that, but okay. I, didn't, I, I didn't have any bad experiences in Pakistan, actually. I never had, like, a close call or anything like that. Yeah. I have a lot of friends and family there, so it was... I was definitely played it smart, though. Like, uh, one thing I will say about Pakistan is if you go there and you're a local, like, Someone told me this actually when I was there. He said that people are very cunning. They're very street smart. Like they will, <laughs> they will trick you. You know what I'm saying? They'll yeah, uh, yeah. they'll be nice to you and stuff, but they'll trick you out of money, out of something. Well, no, like, yeah. I mean, like I think that's everywhere. But, like, because besides yeah, the US. he was basically explaining like if you go somewhere and you don't know where you are, you don't know the location and stuff. Yeah. Like you kind of like are a sitting duck in a lot of places. Like if yeah. someone has bad intentions, they you're fucked. You're fucked so, <laughs> I think that is everywhere. Um, but in third world countries and like kind of more like rural areas it becomes more of like a problem because it literally tells you like on the government website like if you go to some of these um they're called tribal areas in pakistan like yeah. they, the government really can't help you oh, so okay. like literally like you're kind yeah, of yeah. fucked but yeah. i mean like i mean that makes sense like in like so. 
if you go to like some bazaars, like just in other places, like if they tell you, because if you if, if you go to like third world countries, you realize that when you go shopping, like most places don't have price tags. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're a local, like you can kind of like haggle a little bit and oh, like no, get a lower. Oh no, hundred percent. Like if they know yeah. you're a tourist, like you're fucked. Like you were paying like more than top dollar for like whatever you're buying. So I, I actually found it to be like in between. So if yeah. you go to actual stores, like um clothing shops, like more like high end stores, okay, they'll like be like, oh, they're tourists. Like let's yeah, like. Yeah. Raise the price, yeah. I remember there's a time where I was trying to buy a shirt and it said everything's fifty percent off, and then I went to buy it and they're like, "Oh, this is the wrong price tag. It's actually like double the price, and it's not on sale." So I was yeah. like, "You're trying to fuck me over." Like, no, I'm not gonna buy this shirt. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah. And then I go to like, let's say a biryani shop, like lo like five minutes from my home, and they like know me. They're like, "Yo, you're not from here. You're American. You're not paying. They won't take my money." Really? Yeah. So many places around like that's my never village. happened before. They've never given me shit for free so, because I'm American. So if you look up Pakistani, like there's like memes and stuff about like people who've traveled there, and they're like literally so like like no, they won't take their money and really? stuff. Like it's like I think of more of a Pakistani thing where. They feel like it's a traditional. It's a traditional. If it's a guest, like they tell me, you're a milmana, which means like guest. And okay. if you're a guest, like you're, they they feel like it's an insult to them if you're trying to give them your money. Like yeah. literally, I try to give them the money, they'd be like, you're insulting me. Like so. damn. Yeah. So I'd be like, okay. That's wild. No, yeah. yeah Iranians are like super greedy. They're like Jewish people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, just jokes. Just jokes, bro. This guy listens to Kanye West. You know. Yeah. They always they're, 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 they're always like, here. is he like? Yeah. They always just trying to take my money. That's, that's funny. But like, yeah, like I mean, personally, like I mean, you obviously went when you're way when you were older than I was. But like when yeah. I came back, nonetheless, like I was just super grateful and just like everything because I had like running water when I came home. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you'll you'll get grateful for quickly. Like ex electricity is one thing. Like yeah. we, so our family had a generator, but um, that's like a privilege there. Like having a generator that you can turn on and get the electricity again. But let's say I was out and about. And I'm at someone else's house and that electricity goes out. They're all fanning themselves with these little hand fans. Yeah. And, and like your hand gets tired quick. Like they're used to it. They're like machines. And they're <laughs> for like 30 minutes fanning themselves. Like, damn. like, like, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, damn, like my hand is getting tired quickly. Cause they're just like, they've, they've yeah. done that for years. But, and it's like 110 degrees there in the summer. Like you're going to, like, yeah, there's so like, many times I felt like I was suffocating. Like I'd be like, a no, cause the air's yeah. thick, right? Yeah. Cause like when I'm in, in Tehran, which is like the capital of Iran, like the entire city's on a plateau. So, like, in between mountains, so like, the air is just still, like, 24-7. So, like, it's always, like, you're breathing in, like, reused oxygen. And just, like, it's the most annoying thing ever. It's always, like, always, like, thick in the chest. Yeah, no. And when I went to, we'll talk about this later, but when I went to, like, on the way to Pakistan, I had stopped in Dubai for a day. Yeah. And I got to see my uncle. And when I got off the airport there, that's, like, the most, like, the heat was worse than Pakistan. Yeah. In Dubai, it's actually, like, fucking... Well, like, okay, well, like, like, I'm not the UAE's gonna, different, though. Like, the entire yeah. UAE's kind of, I feel like it's separate from, like, other Middle East, like, the, it, it is, countries. but holy shit, when I tell you, you get from an air-conditioned airport and you step out into Dubai, like, the heat wave, <laughs> like, you literally feel like you're suffocating, like, you can't breathe in because really? the air is hot. Like, it's, and this was, like, late in the afternoon, so, like, I can't even imagine, like, midday and stuff, like, that shit was fucked. Damn, yeah. that's actually bad. No, but like, I mean, and this is kind of like where I want to stem from. I'm glad that you mentioned like, like Abu Dhabi and like Dubai, but yeah. Um, I like people like what we're talking about right now is kind of like the stigma everyone has about middle the Middle East. It's like, oh, like yeah, like no running water, no electricity. It's like yeah, yeah. Like it's basically like the hood times seven. But there's like, different countries. Obviously. Yeah, but there are different yeah. countries, and like, I, like so people. And Pakistan is actually like they they classify me not as Middle Eastern technically. I'm Asian. Yeah. Because Pakistan is like next to India. It's in Southeast Asia, so. Okay. I don't know. But um, like, per, I mean, like yeah, per, personally, like it's I, more Middle Eastern culture though. So. That's, that is true. That is mm -hmm. true. But like, I I do see like. When when I I when I talk about the UAE to like some people. They kind of, no, they're not ignorant, but, like, they just assume that it's, like, everywhere else. Yeah, they're like, and, like oh, yeah. So they're like, crazy. oh, like, no way the UAE can be, like, and when I, when I say UAE, UAE, I mean, like, like Emirates, like, the United Arab Emirates are a collection of, You also of, like, do Saudi Arabia, too. I can include that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but those are, those are, like, they're, like, a collection of, like, Emirates owned by, like, like several, like, uh, what are they, kings, I guess? Yeah, so it's, I think it's, like, different states, actually. Yeah. It's just like the United States is 50 states. They have, like, seven or eight states. I might be wrong. Yeah, it's, but like, Qatar. They have, yeah, they have Qatar. They have Dubai, Abu, Abu, Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. 
I don't know, like, and, like, some other yeah, ones, like, but Abu Dhabi is actually the biggest one. It's like covers like almost eighty percent of the yeah. entire UAE, I think. But yeah, and people have this like misconception. It's like, like personally, I believe because like I've only been I've been to Dubai like maybe once or twice, like over layover, and I just kind of like look around. Yeah. yeah. But, like personally, th- through my experience and just word of mouth, like other people telling me about it, it seems better than like the U.S. Okay, so, um, in terms of like wealth and how clean the place is, and like, I say it's more advanced. Yeah, uh, it's hard well, to compare. Also, it's well, better. It's so it's, advanced, it's crime rates. Like, there's no crime. Like, I mean, like, I, I, I haven't tested this theory out personally myself, but like, I've heard sort of people just no, leave their is. watches on like the beach. Yes, yeah, so like, you can leave your in Abu Dhabi. You can leave your phone, your wallet, your shoes. No one's gonna even try to take that. Yeah. Because first of all, even if they needed it, which they probably don't, um, like there's cameras if everywhere. If you take like, it, you're done. Yeah, and the side, the, the punishments are crazy, and there's cameras. Really? Like no, they, but they, no, no, and they like, advance camp. They they get you for speeding like very like they'll both get you for speeding like I I like, yeah. So one of my family members lives there and he's like, bro, like he's like, I just go speed limit. He's like, I don't go anything above speed limit because like their cameras like every like 40, 50 feet. The, like the car culture in Abu in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, those places is crazy. Like um, literally, you'll see everyone have V eight, have supercars. Like yeah. there's like um car like supercar fucking. Um, museums like everywhere and like there's like a person told me there that he goes and he just test drives like these supercars for fun because they'll let you do it and like really? every, yes and and like there's even like race tracks that like normal people can go afford and race like f1 cars yeah because like yeah. going to a track here in like mass is like yeah. 500 dollars for track fee and then you have to bring your own gas yeah. change brake pads like, like you're paying like, for a weekend of like racing here in mass like you're spending like 1500 bucks I would say, uh, the best way to put it is I would say Abu Dhabi is like a fucking... It's like a utopia. Yeah, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, like everywhere is like an ultra advanced version of like Rodeo Drive. Like yeah. it's very like, I don't know. Bro, well, wait, I mean, like, I think of it as a utopia because like, I mean, there's... there's. You'll just see like hella high and it. shit everywhere. It's like, and and the buildings, like there is something I told you about, like I think they call them the pineapple... Towers. I think the rotating buildings. Oh, yeah, like the, and there's also like the umbrella ones. Yeah. They also have some. They also have something called yeah, like some crazy shit. It's like a, um, it's called like a crescent moon. Mm. I think it's either either in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, but it's like a building that looks like a waning or waxing moon, and like yeah. it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I think a cool fact about Abu Dhabi and Dubai that people don't really know is if you walk around there, like you'll see like cats, like like you won't see stray dogs like in taxi and stuff. Yeah. You'll see like cats walking around like. Like, I saw, like, three or four cats in one night just because they, like, let them out because it's, like, part of the Islamic culture. Yeah. Like, we respect cats a lot. I'm allergic to cats, so I wish it was dogs. <laughs> but, like, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't realize they just had, like, a bunch of cats in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, just walking around. Like, that's cool. No, yeah, but, like, I want to, like, I lo- I was, like, thinking about, I mean, Dubai is, like, one of those places that, like, you can't, if you can go there, if you have, like, some money, maybe not a lot of money, but like you can only enjoy it if you're like. Some, all right, so something cool I learned about Abu Dhabi and Dubai. A lot of people don't know this. It's they pay a lot of people by their passport. Okay, like where, you're, where you're from? So let me explain. So okay, someone yeah, that yeah. I met in the airport who was a worker, he told me that in Abu Dhabi, at least for his condition, um, he got you get paid a good amount for working at the airport, like enough to live. Like, they're, yeah. like there, he said the living, the means of living. Is not as expensive as people think. It's just if you want to live a luxurious life. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. So, but like you could live theoretically, like if you can live like in New York, you can live in Abu Dhabi. Like that's just how it is. Okay. But but still, it's still a little. Yeah. Let, let me. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be a little expensive, but people over over imagine how expensive it is and how um, attainable it is. But um, I would say the person at the airport he told me that when he had his passport, um, he was from Pakistan. He he got paid a decent amount, but his boss had a a, a passport. I think it's from Canada, and she got paid a lot more. Really? It was paid by passport. So like, what do you think, like a U.S. passport? Like- he said a U.S. passport. If I wanted to come work in Abu Dhabi for a lot of jobs, they would like automatically promote me a couple positions. No like, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be working over. It's kind of fucked if you think about that. So like, have you ever thought about that though? I immediately was like, bet, I'm going to keep this in mind <laughs> that I can now, when I get a degree or whatever, I can look for jobs yeah. in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and, like, maybe get paid a lot more than I would in the States and live a cooler life. Like, I don't know. Also, yeah, because health any, is free Anyone too. can do that. Yeah, anyone can do that. People don't even realize. But a big thing that draws people away is it is, a like, a Muslim country. Yeah. But... If you have money there, like, you don't understand. Like, all these celebrities go there. If you have money there, Dude, you can I, do whatever I, yeah, you want. Like, I, I feel really... like people are, like, I feel like they, like, mistake. It's, like, I think you they saw, incorporate I the, fact, like, the fact that it's a Muslim country yeah. and the fact that it's, like, Dubai. I feel, like, I feel like those two, like, 
they can't separate the, the two ideas. Through. Like, let me explain. I think it was like Neymar or Ronaldo or some shit. You, you okay. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was one of them. They were at um, Saudi Arabia or Abu Dhabi, Dubai, some very like one of the top Muslim countries in the world, and they were like living there with their girlfriend. But they were like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. obviously, they're like, not married. Yeah, they're not married and shit. And it was very public. But, like, did they do anything about it? Nah, because it's well, like... Well, okay, to be sure... Yeah, obviously, because he's famous and stuff. But, like, I feel like the person, the people I met there have told me, like, like yeah, there's, like, clubs. There's a bunch... It's getting more and more, like... West- well, okay, so, per- yeah. personally, I think, like, the the idea that Islam is tied into, the, like, society is, like... Is, t- is tied to the structure of society. Yeah, it's not so it's that like, strict. Yeah. For example, it's, like, they allow, like... And like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't want, we're not going to get too political here, just an example, but like, like, being like, just, it's just like gay marriage and gay, like being gay, like in, in Dubai is like illegal, you can't, it's like, it's like, it's against the law. Okay. Yeah, but like, I've, but like, yeah, I've seen and I've, I, I've like just heard people like, who are gay, they go, like, they go hang out there. It's not because they're doing it in secret. They don't really, the people in Dubai, they don't care. The reason the law is in place is so it doesn't affect the society. Mm. So it's like, I feel like. Like, the society is built on, like, the groundwork of Islam, but it's not governed by it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, like, the people who are saying that act like, you know, like, gay marriage wasn't illegal in the U.S., like, not too long ago. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. Like, obviously, countries change their laws and they advance on. So, I honestly... Well, no, I, they better yeah, not change that, but, like... Um, so... We will, uh, we will <laughs> to get back to the subject yeah, of, of like the differences in the in those countries is there's obviously Muslim countries that are like third world too like yeah. going back to electricity and water stuff there's a lot of stuff we come back to to US for you know it's like a country that has a lot of freedoms and, and blessings that you'll be grateful for because there's days that I didn't want to be there because I'm just not built for it like I'm yeah. like the electricity goes out or I'm in the middle of a shower like, everything damn. goes black or some shit and then like the water runs out and i'm like have a soap full of hair and shit i'm yeah, like i don't yeah. want to be here bro. and then there's like a big ass bug with like eight legs and <laughs> shit like a frog in my room or some shit i'm like bro how this bitch get in here you know all this crazy shit i'm like yo like this kind of like too much but yeah um i don't know and also just like you feel a lot more um it's like a blessing to kind of like go somewhere like that's not your home and then come back and make it safer. You know, that's an under. Yeah, I mean, all, it's, it's like blessing. So you you had like a, you had like some sort of pilgrimage, I believe. Yeah, yeah. When you're traveling, like you're not really at home. Like I was raised here in the yeah. U.S. Like, uh, I feel like you feel like a lot. Of, I was at home. I was with my family, and I definitely uh, enjoy a lot of parts of it. I miss a lot of parts of it, but um, it, you definitely feels more like home where I'm like from. In, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I was born here. I was, like, spent most of my life here, so. I would I would enjoy it more if, like, my entire family moved to the U.S. <laughs> and then I just, I don't know. I, I might still go back to Pakistan because the nature there in Pakistan is beautiful. That's something that we have beautiful nature in the U.S., but, like, I'm telling you, you go to somewhere like Pakistan that's, like, very rural and stuff, and you go out to the mountains there, it's like you're in a wallpaper. Yeah, like, I saw it on your, your yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing because there's no pollution. There's, like, it's all just, like... And you're a whole different part of the world, so I think it has its own, like... The vibe you, is just, like, yeah, it's just awesome. There's goats and stuff. You see walk around in the mountains. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yo, what the, what the hell is this? Yeah, like, I mean, like, we have, like, a little bit... We have, like, a country... Yeah. Not, not like a, we have, like, a house... Um, in like the country in Iran and like it's just like surrounded by like walnut trees it's like a walnut tree farm yeah. and like basically like it's just, like this house like it's not like in the desert but it's like a desert vibe and like you just see all these trees around like the, it's just like something you'll never find here mm-hmm. and like I just think that like that's what makes it so special and like I just feel like if ever if they got their shit together like we'd be like it'd be awesome to live there yeah but it is what it is so when's the I forget when's the last time you went to Iran fresh going to freshman year probably like, like high school, year. so like I'd say like twenty seventeen, like right, wait, 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 twenty, yeah, twenty eighteen, I guess. Okay, and you have family there? Yeah, well, I have like a decent amount of family there. Okay, so for me, I was I was the first one on either side of my family to be born in America. Really? Yeah, I had all my family Same. on my oh, on my okay. dad's side in Pakistan, all my family on my mom's side in Pakistan, like they. Everyone up so until everyone up until me was just from Pakistan. And then yeah, I was yeah. the first one on either side to be um, born in America. So that's tough. Yeah, and then um, you're like Neo from the Matrix. <laughs> uh, honestly, 
uh, this is a kind of kind of dumb, but I like haven't fully watched the Matrix. I can't even take that. Dude, uh, seriously? I'm, uh, I know everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I live under rock. I live under rock. Know is like, bro, I live under rock. I, I live under rock. I know like what it's about. I remember like most of it, but like I don't. Know. Like it's <sighs> like I remember the part where he takes off like the. There he's like he's in a simulation the whole time. All right, go, going back to the subject though. Okay. Um. Would you say comparing um. Iran and Pakistan, like what similarities do you see? I mean, yeah. besides them being like Muslim countries. Not to actually, let me let me change that. Actually, let me change that. No, no, I know, I, I, I do, I do want to answer that question. Okay, right? okay, I'll give you um, a second thing. Personally, Iran is an extremely governed country. Like the country is extremely well like ordered and civilized in that sense of like there's like no outlaws. Like there's like it's, it's very. It's kind of like here, but it's just under, like, a totalitarian rule. It's, like, you just have, like, a firm hand on everything. Like, you have, like, the, uh, like, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Like, they're just, like, ass wipes about it. Like, basically, they just have, like, super firm control. They don't, like, you like, the oil money. They Basically, they, they just, like, consolidate all the money, keep it to themselves, and, like, let everyone else get screwed over. And it's, like, yet, yet, they, they do keep a firm rule. And, like, if anyone tries to, like, oppose them, which has been happening recently because like, of protests and stuff, they just kill them. Whereas, like, I think Pakistan's a bit more, like, ungoverned. I don't know if that's, like, true or not. Um, so the politics of, of Pakistan is pretty complex. Like, okay. Um, we don't have to go into it. We're not, if, I, if we go into it, I could, I could say a lot of interesting stuff, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a while to really explain it. Yeah. But basically, to, to go on that, something I see a similarity between Pakistan and Iran is, I'm not sure exactly what is the... What is like Iran and Iraq are obviously they're next to each other. Yeah. What's their relationship like? They hate each other. Exactly. So that, that it's like were they, did they used to be together? No. I okay. mean like like my like I mean as long as I remember like my mom is like PTSD from like the war because like bombs were dropping on her house and stuff. Okay, so I don't think it's been to that extreme. I mean, let me explain. Pakistan and India used to be one. Yeah. Right. They used to be together. Y'all probably beefing, man. And then there was like a divide where Pakistan kind of separated, got its own like country, okay, like independence, independence, and a lot of people who were um like Indians in Pakistan, they got killed, and a lot of Pakistanis who were living the well, you like boys well, India, they got killed, and then there's like yeah. a lot of like. A, I still like because you don't look Indian, you look Middle Eastern. Yeah. So I would say I, I'm actually like um a Pakhtun in Pakistan, and that's um more. Like comes from the Afghanistani side. Okay. Yeah. So Pakistan is also right next to Afghanistan, and there's a lot of people who like come their their lineage comes from there. Yeah. It's like all mixed in, you know. Yeah. This is why it's been such a like a, a country that's been through so many wars. If you look into the history of Pakistan, it actually is like one of the most attacked countries like of all time. Like all the, all the way in the days of Alexander the Great, he was like trying to conquer okay. Pakistan. Uh-huh. You know, and all the way up to like the war on terror. What's, what's over there, bro? What, what, what you um, So let so me special. explain. Let me explain. Pakistan is built right between Afghanistan and India. Yeah. It's the land right smack between, and and their relationships always been complex because India used to be the land of riches. If you but, like, remember, is it like a key trading route? Like, do you remember like, India yeah, used to yeah, be the land so of riches? Well, yeah, yeah, everyone would try to get to it. So when Alexander the Great was trying to get to India, he had to get through Afghanistan and Pakistan. Yeah. And he had conquered. There's a story actually. He had conquered Mesopotamia in, like, a year. All these countries in, like, a year or something. Yeah. But he was stuck in, like, Afghanistan, Pakistan for, like, the, for like multiple years. So his mother wrote him a letter saying, how did you conquer all these, you know, countries so quickly? And you're, like, stuck stuck in, like, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And he sent her back um, just a, a pack of Afghan soil. And he told her to sprinkle around her palace. And so we started sprinkling around her palace. Her her Korea. servant her servants walk, would walk over the soil and then they start fighting amongst each other. <laughs> so so that was like is that a true story? It's a true story. It's a true story. Really? Yeah, I read it in the in a book called The History of the Pakhtuns and it's, it's yeah. So that's actually that's actually very interesting. Yeah so, yeah yeah. So then she realized like so what her what her son was going through. So it's just a land of conflict. Basically. It's always been a land of conflict and the people they just don't know how to lose like they've always been able to get this their land back. Yeah. Because of the terrain, because of like they just simply like they they will get they will get have to fight the war and lose it for a long while, but they'll always win at the end. You know they always, but the you know to what cost? Because now you know the land's been sold. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. true. I'm just like curious. It's, it's a very lost, war zone. It's a, is it a lost cause? I I don't know. I would say it's very complex. Um, one thing that really stuck with me was 
I met some person in Pakistan. They told me they're like, oh, you're from America. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I forget what they said. I, I didn't hear them. And I asked my cousin like, what they say. And they're like, he's like, oh, you're lucky because you have, you have peace. You don't have war. Yeah. And I'm just like, I guess that's true. Like, I never really, you don't really ever have to worry about the effects of war. We don't, we don't really see the effects of war in our community and stuff like that. And that's like a underrated privilege and stuff. I think a lot of people just want to escape war. Yeah, and actually, yeah, I think it's a good place to end it. Actually, like, yeah, I just hope for peace, huh? Yeah, hope for peace across the world. You know, spread love, positivity, and always appreciate your blessings. You know, yeah, I and don't, definitely I don't go to go, go to different parts of the world, go outside your bubble, explore different cultures. You know, it's very cool. I love to go to India. I love to go to, um, uh, different places. I love to go to Iran. Yeah, Iraq. I, mean, like, I just don't. Yeah, we, we just don't. So. Need, we, we don't know what we're grateful grateful for until yeah. we lose it. So. So. That's a good way. I think it's been a good talk. Yeah, it has been. Here. I was glad, glad yeah. you came on. I want to thank everyone for watching. Yeah. Um, tune into the next episode. I'll be coming out uh, next week, obviously, on Monday. And, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.